in some way, at some time, we'll get to a point of forgiveness in our own timing, in our own way. It's been a minute and we haven't had a one-on-one -on -one conversation, one that it, you know, <laughs> pulls on our growth and allows us to journey onward as individuals. This one is a sticky, icky subject that many people don't like to have conversations about because in all understanding, everyone has their beliefs and sometimes people like to impose their beliefs harshly on others who have not forgiven. Hmm. Let's sit with that. Before I go into why forgiveness and timing is not congruent with some people, I want us to look at the extremes and the unextreme of forgiveness on a minimum and a maximum level. Let's go there. <laughs> Say, for example, you have a friend or a family member that told a white lie. Now, before the lie was told, trust was never a factor because they showed themselves to be believable, trustworthy. As humans, we become disappointed in the result of the lie. And because it was a little white lie, the disappointment set, but it didn't settle in our hearts and in our minds. It made us more mindful, maybe, about the way that we perceived with this person, but it was forgivable because it wasn't that bad. That is the minimum of forgiveness. Here's the maximum. Someone that you loved very deeply was taken away from you in the act of violence. And so you are left with the emptiness that someone caused you incongruence to pain. Here's another maximum. <laughs> A person was taken advantage of in the younger years or in their older years where the trauma has settled, it sifted its way through the years, but it processes very differently in relationships and connections with people. They never got an apology or an understanding of why they were violated, but they were left with the traumas and triggers to dwell in their heart and in their minds. They didn't ask for their bodies to be taken advantage of. So when a person comes to another person and says what the Bible says, and listen, I am not here to counteract what the Bible says because I am one that believes in forgiveness. But when you impose your beliefs harshly on a person without understanding the situation in length and in breadth, you cannot impose the all right statement of forgive because when you tell a person to forgive in that instance you're rushing them to make a decision and their heart isn't right you know that the correlation between forgiveness and your heart is that it has to come together it has to mesh someone has to make a decision to let it go out of their heart and the heart has to be turned from an unsettled feeling to one that has fleed the depression that has been opposed on their heart. And if you force a person to do something, it is not authentic. It is not real. <laughs> they can say out loud, okay, I forgive, but it still settles in their spirit and their heart and their mind. And so therefore forgiveness did not take place. Forgiveness is a process. And the deeper that the wound is, the deeper the person has to go to healing. And it's a personal thing. It is not for someone to oppose or impose, I'm sorry, their view on what forgiveness looks like to someone else. Your situation may have been similar, but it is not the same. You don't have the historical view of another person. You don't know the exasperating triggers and traumas that led to that. So to have an overall overarching view of forgiveness right across the board for every single person the timetable in which you think is not justified it is difficult to forgive someone 
when their behaviors do not differ. You know how hard it is to tell a person you hurt me and they stand in front of you and said, you're not hurt. They counteract what you've been feeling, your afflictions, the obvious hurt and pain that you had to suffer through. That is what unforgiveness feels like when it's festered in the heart. That it's why it's so hard. And the maximum of situations where forgiveness is at stake, it is hard because the apology was not given and the behavior is no different. The only way that a person can get to a place of forgiveness is number one, you have to work on the trauma that settles inside of your heart and in your body. And listen, trauma is not this, um, this event that happens every now and then. People are exposed to trauma on a daily basis. It really brings about anxiety in their everyday life. Places, smells, the taste of something, the way something may look triggers a person into trauma. And the only way to become untraumatized is to heal through the process of understanding that I'm never going to be okay and never going to forgive that person or even myself if I don't work on the process of healing through this trauma and how does that work every individual is different some may need professional help because sometimes those things seep so far down that we don't have the tools to make it work we cannot untrauma the trauma on the deepest level so professional help is advisable for those who are stuck in a pattern an unforgiveness that has festered in hate that has festered in self-hate destruction in relationships destruction in yourself in a physical and emotional state of mind and also with the inability to trust other people again. Now we can do the self work and understanding that in the absence of an apology, we choose to move forward because we want joy, not happiness. We all know happiness is temporary, but we want joy from the moment that we decide we have forgiven until our expiration date. The thing about unforgiveness that God teaches us and the reason why he wants us to forgive is because it does have a profound effect on us as people. That we harbor so much of that in our hearts and in our minds that we become different people and we often become difficult. One that is minced with anxiety and depression, sadness, uh, a loss of interest in many things. Uh, difficulty in having relationships and connections with people. It affects our walk with life. And on a grander scale, the way that we understand it on the biblical and scriptural understanding and level is that God forgave all of our sins so that we could live again. And so if God can forgive us of the many things that we have done over our lifetime, surely we have space to forgive others. And this is a great argument that people give. I'm not God. None of us are. But when your heart is healed and your life is changed, forgiveness looks like and operates from love and not mere acceptance to move on. If you are in a place where something was done so heinous to you, where it is settling in your spirit, in your heart, in your mind, where you can't think freely and you just cannot get yourself to forgive, I wanna remind you that no, forgiveness doesn't have uh, a designated date. But I'll tell you that if you work on the process of forgiving someone, 
You not live in a space in a life where you have reserve and being free. Because the longer you allow it to linger, the longer you will be without joy. The longer you will be without freedom of life, love, and expression. So I don't want you to think that the message is to not forgive. The message is don't make anyone put a timetable by their beliefs and the instances and the things that they have said to you to forgive now because it is a process. But I don't want you to stay in a place of unforgiveness because it still feels bad. In the process, when you're ready, work on the healing. Understand that life will sometimes give you what you didn't ask for. That many of us are victims in circumstances that we didn't ask for. But when you forgive someone for something that was done to you, an affliction that was so horrible and so hurtful, there is also another side of joy that you will see and compassion in a sense for other people, not necessarily the person who robbed you of whatever it was in your happiness, but a point of compassion to understand that you give grace to yourself for holding yourself hostage for the many years that you set with that unforgiveness in your heart. And we have to understand as well that it is true that forgiveness is not for them, it's for us. It is the releasing of the power that unforgiveness holds on our bodies and our minds and our spirits and our walk in our existence. I don't want to be powerless to things that have happened in my life because we also understand that staying in that position means that we will always look at ourselves as a victim and not a victor. And I refuse to err on the side of weakness when it comes to not allowing my spirit, my mind, and everything to be free. So I want you to remember that in the process of forgiveness, because listen, the totality of what you have to forgive doesn't look like the person who's telling you to forgive the other person. So sit with your situation as long as you need it to, but work through the process. Don't hold anger in your heart where it festers into madness and it takes over the life that God wants for you. Do not rush to forgive. Because when we rush and not go through the process, we realize that we really didn't forgive. And it's still in our hearts. That was it. I hope you um, enjoyed that episode. This is a warm like place. I don't want anybody coming in the comment section being demeaning or making anyone feel less than. We all are here to learn. There are all different perspectives. This is not knocking any set of people versus this one. It's just the process of forgiveness and unforgiveness that all of us has, have dealt with, but on different levels with an understanding that in some way, at some time, we'll get to a point of forgiveness in our own timing, in our own way, unless God intercedes and shows us something different. Okay. All right. Peace.